We discuss whether the UNSC could destroy the Death Star on today's episode of Star Wars Versus. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Versus episode. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. If you'd like to support the channel while also getting a free audiobook, visit audibletrial.com slash Eckhart Slaughter. The service has thousands of audiobooks, including most of the Star Wars canon and Legends universes and the Halo EU. Links as always in the description. But today we are examining whether the UNSC could take on the Death Star, or conversely, whether the Death Star could survive a UNSC attack. The rules today are as follows. We're using the Death Star 1, including the exhaust port weakness. However, the UNSC has no knowledge of the station's design flaws. They bring into battle against the Death Star the fleet that defended Earth at the end of the Human Covenant War. But before we get into the actual battle, let's take a quick look at the forces we're dealing with here, and we'll start with the Empire. The Death Star 1 was a gargantuan space station, capable of destroying planets. Its planet-busting power came from the Super Laser, which not only removed the pesky planet, but absolutely annihilated it. The laser could also easily hit smaller targets, including capital ships. When destroying a planet, the DS-1 Super Laser took a full day to recharge. However, full power was not needed to take down a capital ship, and at lower power levels, the station could be refired in mere minutes. The Death Star 1 also possessed secondary offensive weaponry systems, including over 10,000 lasers, turbo lasers, ion cannons, torpedo launchers, and other miscellaneous armaments. However, the sheer power used by the Super Laser and those other weapons meant that the Death Star 1 did not have full shielding unlike the DS-2, which was protected by the planet-side generator. That means that it was vulnerable to attack by both energy and projectile weapons, something relatively rare for Star Wars ships and certainly space stations. Ordinarily, this wasn't an issue. The station was so massive and armed with so many weapons that it could easily outlast any attacking fleet. What's more, the hull of the DS-1 was over 3 kilometers thick, although we do see that strafing runs against the surface, even by starfighters, can cause visible damage. Finally, over 7,000 starfighters launched from likely hundreds if not thousands of hangar bays helped protect the station against smaller targets while also directly engaging larger ships. Assaulting the Imperial Battle Station is the UNSC home fleet. During the Battle of Earth, the UNSC's greatest assets were their orbital defense platforms, stations armed with incredibly powerful magnetic accelerator cannons, MAX, which could punch through multiple Covenant capital ships with a single shot. However, because the fleet is attacking away from Earth, the ODPs will not be included. Halo 2 Anniversary clearly shows us that the UNSC 5th fleet was made up of 8 heavy cruisers and 67 light frigates. I don't think analyzing the specific subtypes are important for today's purposes. However, the 5th fleet was likely not the only force protecting Earth. We also know of Battlegroup Victory, the 7th Defense Fleet, the Sol Defense Group, as well as miscellaneous corvettes and frigates. In a previous video, I've given the UNSC two command ships, nine cruisers, 90 frigates and corvettes, and several hundred longsword fighters. I think I stand by that. Of course, the fleet also had access to Master Chief and thousands of marines. The main weapon of a UNSC ship is its magnetic accelerator cannon, which varies in power depending on the size of the vessel to which it is mounted. The ships, however, also carried point defense cannons, nuclear missiles, and other weapons, but did not possess shielding, making them very vulnerable to energy weapons weapons like turbo lasers. But let's now look at the actual battle, and there are two elements to this engagement which I consider to be the most important, range and shielding. First, let's talk about shielding. If the Death Star was just a mobile station with no super lasers and instead energy dedicated to a powerful particle and ray shield, or if it was protected by a ground-based shield like the DS-2, it would be unbeatable. However, given that it's only protected by a very basic shield, it will be vulnerable to the fire of the UNSC fleet. On the other hand, UNSC ships without shields will be absolutely melted when faced with the high-powered turbo lasers used by the Star Wars universe. That's why the second, more important factor is range. Now, I don't usually like to talk about range when doing ordinary starship or fleet versus episodes, but in a case like this, I think it's too important to disregard. 
The Death Star's turbo lasers work so well because if you want to attack the station directly with large ships and big guns, you have to enter the kill zone of the station's own turbo lasers with Halo ships and a different weapon system that's not necessarily the case. As a brief note, while the turbo lasers themselves are somewhat limited, the range of the Death Star super laser itself is fairly impressive. It destroys Alderaan from some distance, and the Death Star 2 is shown engaging the rebel fleet with its super laser, but not turbo lasers. Max, on the other hand, due to Newton's first law, have a generally unlimited range, with the only limiting factor being the fact that it becomes trivially easy to avoid a shot if the distance becomes too great. However, given that the Death Star moves very slowly and and predictably, the engagement range of the UNSC fleet should be very, very long. And this is how I think the battle would go down. It's very unlikely that the UNSC would slip space close into the Death Star, as their FTL tech is too basic for precise jumps. However, in this case, that's actually an advantage, as it will position the fleet clearly outside turbo laser range. That being said, I think the Death Star will be able to destroy at least a couple of cruisers before the UNSC figures what's up. However, given again that the Death Star is not really moving, and that there are clearly many high-powered weapons on the station's surface, they will likely maintain range, and begin firing at the station with their MAC cannons. I think the first obvious target is the Super Laser Dish, and I think 80 or 90 MAC blasts hitting it together will do some serious catastrophic damage, probably disabling the weapon, and maybe even the station itself. If that's not the case, and the laser continues firing, the UNSC will probably simply reposition their fleet outside the firing arc of the main weapon, while also continuing to pound away at the station. The UNSC is very, very used to fighting singular big targets with many small ships, and I really do think that just because of the difference in range we're talking about here, the Death Star has no way to fire back, and will just continually take hits from the UNSC fleet. Now, the first response of the commanders on the Death Star will most likely be to launch their fighters. And the real question is, can those fighters reach the UNSC fleet before the station is destroyed? Because let's face it, there are thousands of TIE fighters, and only probably about a hundred long swords, with starfighter combat being much more prevalent in the Star Wars universe. Given the distances we're talking about here, I don't think the TIEs will be able to reach the fleet in time, especially where the UNSC can just just continually recycling and firing their max without having to worry about defensive posturing. I think with enough shots towards the center of the station, something critical will eventually be destroyed. I mean, 4 kilometer thick armor is quite impressive, but without shielding, it couldn't stand up to the MAC barrage of even a single ship, much less a few dozen. So I think just because of that, and how the different weapons work in the two universes, the UNSC takes this. One thing the UNSC should not try is a Spartan boarding team. Yes, Master Chief and his marine allies are very, very capable warriors, but the Death Star 1 has over 25,000 stormtroopers. I don't think there's any way that he could make it through the ship and reach something critical, and that's assuming he even makes it there. Again, those thousands of TIE fighters may not be able to engage the fleet directly, however, they certainly will be able to screen against incoming vessels. The only reason the Millennium Falcon and its crew was able to disable key components of the Death Star and escape was because Vader allowed them to do so. A fully alert and mobilized battle station would be able to easily take care of even powerful invaders. All in all, though, I still give it to the UNSC, and I think they win 10 times out of 10, as long as my assumption about range holds. However, that's just my opinion. What do you think? Would the UNSC be able to take on the Death Star, or would the combination of the powerful super laser and the tens of thousands of turbo lasers just be too much to handle? Let me know all of that and more down in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, also make sure to drop a like, leave a nice comment, and share the video with your friends. If you want more, I've included a relevant playlist in the upper right hand corner. Anyway guys, thank you so much, until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, as always, may the force be with you.